officer involved shooting. Someone died. We're getting arrested. I'm literally in jail and we're talking through the phone, but then like the window. Don't put it in your mouth. Don't swallow it. Don't put it in any of your orifices. Much. <laughs> Save my life. Ladies, today I'm going to talk about something that happened a couple weeks ago now. I had posted a screenshot of my call log on my Instagram story. Should I do a story time on this? Because it was late at night and I had made two calls to my mom, then a call to 911, then I received a call from an unknown number, and then I received a call from my mom, and then I received another call from an unknown number, and then I called my mom again. Clearly everyone wanted to know why I was calling my mom, and also like 911. like damn everyone really wants to know why i was calling my mom so many times on a sunday night because to me that's what's more alarming but you know oh. oh i wanted to do this video because it was just like a weird story and also at the time it just seems more dramatic than it really is i mean it could have been bad <laughs> same the hell was that? Okay, that was weird. It would be interesting to just do a whole video on times that I've called 911. I mean, that might get a little dark. But before we get into the story of what happened a couple nights ago when I had to call 911, we're gonna start with a little teaser story. You know how when you go see like a Pixar movie in theaters, they have that short little film before? What movie was it where it was the old man playing chess? Was that Bugs Life? It's like the pre little short movie. <gasps> oh, shit. Bug. Get off! That probably looked really scary for you guys. That was probably like in Spongebob when the butterfly lands on their little tank and it's like... <laughs> Since I'm on the same level as Pixar, this is my little short film before the main. What is it? What do they call it? Before the feature film. Okay. 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 Playing fetch with my cat at the same time. So this first story, I was in fourth or fifth grade, somewhere around like nine years old. It was a weekend. It was like a Saturday. I had a friend over at the time. She had spent the night, I believe, but we had to work on a project that we had for school. I could not tell you what the project was, but I do know that we had to make something, a model of something. Is it fifth grade? that you learn about like the cell or is that like eighth grade? Bug. I don't remember what it was but kind of the same idea as like a diorama of a cell or like you know the solar system and I think we had like a cardboard tray and we were like trying to figure out what to make each part out of. You get what I'm saying? I don't have it hon. It's over there. <sighs> Poor thing. And yes, I did my hair like this in spirit of telling a story from fourth grade. So my friend spends the night, it's the next day, it's Saturday, and my parents left. I don't know where they went. They went. They had to go somewhere. I think around nine or 10 is when my parents would let me stay by myself for like a couple hours if I had to. It's not like, yeah, like you can do whatever you want and stay here. But like, usually if I was home alone, it was like because my mom had to run to the grocery store. So it didn't happen often, but if I had a friend over, I don't know, they felt better about it, you know? I think it was mostly actually because I would be scared <laughs> if I was alone, so if I had a friend over, then I was fine. We're sitting in my kitchen, and we are thinking of, oh, we're thinking of what material we're gonna use to build this little, I remember specifically, for some reason, we had to make a wheelbarrow. So we're thinking, what are we gonna use, but what are we gonna use that's not, like, basic, that, like, everyone else is gonna use, like, Play-Doh, or, like, that clay that you bake, like, what can we use that's different? So we're thinking, we're thinking, we're like, what are we gonna use? And I'm like, bitch, I got it. I know what we're gonna use. It was just my birthday, and guess what I got for my birthday? Floam. Yeah, it, I'm sure floam isn't a thing anymore. Floam, okay, let me tell you. I actually don't really know what it is, but basically it was like these little balls of foam, I think. I think that's how it got its name. Covered in like... I don't know. Boom, make some sound. Crackle and pop. You want to make something of it and you don't want to stop. Flip it, mold it, wear it to inside this stoneless foam. I don't know what it's covered in because it wasn't like sticky, but it was sticky enough to hold the little balls together. Stretchy and transforms almost anything. Ah! Lame dollhouse into a foam-tastic mansion. What the fuck was foam made out of, okay? Tiny foam microbeads magically stick together and form to any shape you want. Little foam balls that are like bound together by some kind of sticky substance, but not so sticky that it gets on your hands. It was just like malleable, right? So I go get it, I bring it to the counter, we start trying to form our little things, our little wheelbarrow, and then we're like, okay, this is good, but like literally if you even touch it, there's like a dent in it, you know, like it moves. Our whole project, if we made this all out of foam, hours of 
work could be ruined in a second. Someone could touch it, someone could poke it, someone could sit on it. Like, even if it gets a little hot, it'll melt a little bit. Like, we were like, this is probably not the best substance to use for this project. <laughs> but we really wanted to use Flum because it was kind of like a flex. Like, what's up, bitches, with your Play-Doh wheelbarrows? Mine's made of Flum. But like I said, we're home alone. And we're like, this wheelbarrow looks really good, but like, I want to make sure that it stays looking good. We need to get an A on this. We need all of our stuff to be looking fresh. So we're like, well, there's a certain type of clay that you can use to bake and it'll hold its form which literally I had that in my garage too and I think we ended up using it after this but we're like I wonder if you can bake foam you know put it in the oven and it'll just hold its shape now I know what you're probably thinking at this point wow you put the foam in the oven and it freaking started a fire and then you called 911 because you didn't know how to put it out no no it's a little stupider than that actually I'm like let me get the manual and I'll read and see if it says anything about can you bake it how long should you bake it because I knew how to use an oven right the pamphlet is small like there's not really any instructions with this shit. It's just like, don't put it in your mouth, don't swallow it, don't put it in any of your orifices. You squish it, you make things, you look at it, you ruin it, you repeat it. Squish it back and start all over. But what there is, is a phone number. Customer service, I'm assuming. I look at the phone number and I'm like, I'll just call them and ask them. Hey, um, I bought your foam. Can I bake it in the oven? And like, if so, what degrees do I need to preheat my oven to? So I look at the number and you know, it's really weird. You would think it would be like a 1-800 number and it wasn't. I don't remember exactly what the first three numbers were. It was either 999 or like 919. It was something like that. I feel like it could have been 999. Isn't that a thing too? We're giggling. We're like, they're gonna think we're like so stupid and they're gonna think we're like prank calling them. I'm using the house phone on the wall. I press the nine and I get scared and then I put the phone back on the thing and I'm like, I'm too scared to talk to them. Out of the two of us, I was the one who would like do something. Well, I mean, out of a hundred children, I was the one to do something like this, to call a customer service number and be like, can I bake this? And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. I can do this, I can do this. Pick up the phone again. And I dial what I think was 999 or 919. I wonder if I could look up now. I mean, I don't think Flom's a thing anymore, but like, I really would like to know what that number was. <laughs> first time I made it to nine and then I hung up and this time I go nine one and then I hang up but I actually hit the one twice and instead of like slamming the phone down on the receiver I just like pause in my head it's like nine one pause and then I'm like okay should I really do this should I go through with this like I need to consult with my friend here so I hit the nine which would be the second nine and nine one nine I hear a voice saying something we both hear the voice and we're like who's talking to us like yeah it was nine one one obviously I had called nine one one and we kind of just like we're waiting for a second talking and it was as if I just dialed nine and then waited except for we had no idea so we hear like a man's voice it's like hello ma'am ma'am what's your emergency and we just look at each other and we go <gasps> we gasp we're like oh, you know make some kind of noise and i just immediately hang up and then it kind of sinks in what just happened and i'm like i just called 911 what the heck it just like happened so fast it really was such an accident so i hang up right away right and 911 basically just hears gasping and little kids and then hanging up we're like oh my gosh i can't believe i just did that ha <laughs> ha like thinking that it would just end there like i would just pick up the phone and call flom this time and then of course the phone rings because of course they're gonna freaking call back when something like that happens so i answer the phone and i'm like hello they say something like we got a call from this number what's going on what's your emergency whatever i don't remember exactly what they said and i am on the phone and i'm like i was trying to call a number for this flom stuff that i got got it for my birthday and we're trying to do a school project and i was just trying to call flom because i wanted them to tell me if i could bake it or not and then my friend is like tell him it was an accident tell him it was an accident and i'm like it was totally an accident i didn't mean to press 911 i meant to press 919 and they're like okay ma'am how old are you and i'm like nine my friend's like tell him it was an accident it probably sounded a lot like he was coercing me <laughs> he's like do you want me to send someone over there do you need best to send someone over to your location and i'm like no i have a tiny little high-pitched voice like you know they're suspicious it's a little girl calling and they got nothing else to do anyway and he's like okay well we're just gonna send someone over there just in case someone is telling you to say this you don't have to say anything we're gonna send an officer over there to check on you and i'm like no 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 no, no. like it's okay at this point like i'm getting scared we're both getting really scared we're like convinced that we're getting arrested because we just called 911 and it wasn't an emergency it wasn't even a problem it wasn't even an incident we really thought we were gonna be in big trouble like i mean at least i did i was like getting super anxious this is gonna be really freaking bad i'm gonna be in so much trouble literally a minute later through the glass of our front door two men <laughs> them and they like knock on the door and i walk and i open the door tears in my eyes at this point and they say hey is everything all right here do you need any help well 
blah, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It was an accident. I was trying to call. I ran to the kitchen, grabbed the little pamphlet, run back to the front door. I'm like, I was trying to call this number. It's 919 number. It's for Flom. We're doing a school project. I'm just trying to make a wheelbarrow. And they're like, okay. I was like, I swear. I wasn't trying to like falsely call 911 because there's not an emergency. It was just an accident. Like I was trying to call this number. Do you know if I can bake Flom? Because like, I feel like they were there for like five minutes and then they left. I remember after that, I didn't end up calling Flom. And then my parents got home like super quick after that happened. I feel like I was scared to tell them, but then I just like told them anyway. My dad was just laughing. I feel like they just laughed and I was like still very upset and shaken up from the whole thing. Or let it harden and keep it forever. Or let it harden and keep it forever. But that's your little short mini film before the true Pixar movie, which is about to be this story, which honestly might be shorter than that story. I just spent like an hour telling that, so hopefully I cut that down to like five minutes because what the fuck, why'd that take so long? So now, fast forward 15 years to now, to two weeks ago. It was a Sunday night. I had checked my credit card statement earlier that day, which I never do because that's the scariest thing ever and I don't I like to just avoid things so I just don't look at it I mean like obviously I pay it off but I don't look at like every individual thing because it just uh, 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 gives me chills thinking about it but I had looked at it earlier that day and I noticed oh I've been charged monthly for the past year for a gym membership that I wasn't aware that I had still because I canceled it <laughs> when I first moved here July 2017 I got a membership at LA Fitness by December I canceled it because like two really shady things happened which I've talked about I think before but whatever I canceled my membership I was like you're gonna let me out of this membership early even though it was like a year-long thing because otherwise I'm gonna sue you because the reason I wanted to stop going there was because like their employees looked me up after they checked me in they looked for me on Instagram and then he came up to me while I was working out and he was like hey like you want to go on a date with me basically they like broke either codes or laws or whatever it happened twice where they looked me up and then they came up to me while I was working out. One of them said I had a nice ass. An employee of LA Fitness. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> just beside the point, but I canceled that by December. And so from January until that July, when my year long thing was supposed to end in that July, I didn't pay for that membership. For whatever reason, come July, I start getting charged again. And I'm charged for that every single month. It's not super expensive, 40 something dollars a month, but like, bitch, I didn't even know. Yeah, I should have been like more on top of my shit, but they shouldn't have done that. Holy shit, I've been charged 11 times now, and on July 1st, it's probably gonna charge me again. And so I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna be like, what the fuck is up, Kyle? You better get these off my account. You better give me my money back, because I know I was not coming here, and I know that I didn't even have a membership here, so tell me how that even happens, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, it took me literally a year to realize that, but like, Obviously, I learned my lesson. Maybe. I don't know. I've done that before with other things, too. Anyway, that Sunday night, I'm like, okay, what time does this gym close? It closes at 8 on Sunday. So I drive myself to LA Fitness at like 7.45. I'm like, okay, I want to talk to your manager. Actually, no, I just went up to the desk because it was a Sunday and Sunday's like the only day that they don't have all of the sales people there, which is weird because when I worked at a 24-hour fitness, I was there on Sundays. But anyway, so it was just the guy at the front desk like checking you in. I think he was literally the only employee besides like the lady who cleans. I'm like, well, okay, this guy's probably not going to help me because he's the guy that checks people in. So I like explained to him, I'm like, dude, I haven't been here in like a year and a half but i've been charged for the past year he's basically just like i'm really sorry but i can't help you can you come back tomorrow okay fine that was that i go back to my car and this la fitness in particular has a parking garage it's like a two-story parking garage it's pretty small probably only like maybe like 150 spots by the time i got there I parked walked in did this whole thing walked back out to my car it's eight o'clock and the gym's closing and everyone's leaving and there were hardly any people in there to begin with when i got there like there were, i literally saw like two people i go and i get in my car and I do the thing that I often do, which I've actually broken this habit recently because I realized how much time it was accumulating when you go to your car and you sit in your car. I don't ever do like social media from my car. I'm not that bad, but like I'll check emails, I'll text people back at that time. But you know, like you sit in your car for a second. It's probably like 8, 10 at this point, And I like look up from my phone and kind of like look around, assess my surroundings. And I'm like, oh, there's no one left in the parking garage, which there were only two cars there before on my level. And then I look over to my left. There's like a little cement pillar and there's a sign and it says in fact i'll put the photo in here this parking garage closes at 11 30 p.m every night it will lock i see that and i'm like oh, okay like i'm good till 11 30. not that i was gonna stay that long but like i was finishing up what i was doing so 8 15 let's blow this popsicle stand i pull out going around the parking garage going down the ramp oh what's that in front of me a yellow bar 
what i was locked in the parking garage locked in and i was looking straight out onto the street not a good street very sketchy street this gym is not in the best location i am literally seeing people stumbling by <laughs> and it's not like one of those like goes up and down things no it's like when you start a hike on a hiking i don't know why this is what pops into man but like a swing out yellow gate you know what i mean and it locks with like an actual padlock you can't just like drive and have it go up you'll be fine like no you will crash your car okay and i'm like what the fuck am i gonna do so i turn my lights off i leave my car on because i'm scared as fuck okay parking garages so scary at night especially when you're alone in there in that area of town literally it's like off of inglewood boulevard like i mean i don't need to say which la fitness this is i guess but like i'm not about to turn my car off in case someone freaking comes up even though my doors are locked at this point i lock them if i have to get away quickly which i kind of can't because you know there's a gate in front of me but i could back up up this giant ramp <laughs> which i eventually did have to do oh i'm so bad at backing up let alone like the longest fucking ramp backwards uphill narrow i don't know how i did it anyway i'm getting ahead of myself so i leave my car on i'm not turning this off no 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 no. i want to go out to the gate and see like is this fully locked did they just like put a padlock on it and not lock it is it even locked could i push it open but i was too scared to go outside of my car and go check because it's right next to the street there are people maybe you live in like a safe area but i don't okay well i mean i do but i don't live like by the gym it's like not a safe area literally the sunday before this in fact there was a shooting right across the street officer involved shooting someone died it's just not safe and also like i have freaking ptsd okay i'm not about to walk outside of my car go check to see if this gate is locked or unlocked so many things could happen and yeah i was being like over cautious and over dramatic because i am so hyper vigilant when it comes to nighttime sketchy areas being by myself being stuck like not having a way out even later on you'll find out that pretty much everyone was telling me it's good that you didn't get out by yourself leave your car running or turn it off and go check because like it's not safe i was in my head so far as to thinking like what if the gym didn't lock this but like what if someone else locked this and they knew that my car was still in here they locked it so that i would get out and see if it was locked and then they would attack me or you know i was thinking all these things because i'm like well the gym said it doesn't close to 11 30 like clearly whoever was locking up the gate would have seen that my car was still in the garage and running i don't i still don't understand like whoever locked that gate did you not see my car on and running like feet away from it but like blocked by a cement wall like i don't understand how that happened so i'm freaking out in my car well first i google the phone number of la fitness i'm like maybe someone is still inside they can help me no one answers i'm looking up how to get out of a locked parking garage like who to call i'm just like looking up all of these things mostly trying to like get in contact with someone i'm like oh isn't this other la fitness open until nine so i look that up and like they all close at eight on sundays shit when i'm panicking and i don't know who to call i am i gotta call my mom i was scared she wasn't gonna answer because her and my dad were in utah at the time which is like an hour difference time zone so i'm like is she gonna be awake at like 9 30 because at this point it's like 8 30 or so i don't know i had been trying to figure out this whole situation for a while i didn't know what to do i was like trying to call people no one was answering so i'm like what if they're asleep like they come home tomorrow what if they're going to sleep early because they want to be rested anyway she answers and i'm like mom i'm freaking out like i feel so bad because like 99 percent of the time when i call my mom she probably like is so anxious when she sees that i'm calling because she's like oh my god what is going on <laughs> like it's always something dramatic or traumatic in fact i need to call my mom today and just be like hey what's up i tell her what's happening she tells me like no don't get outside of the car and look she's with my dad and she's at my aunt's house who just happened to be like the literal perfect person <laughs> to be with at that time because my aunt is very well known very well connected well respected owns a lot of shit very rich very rich like they were literally in her basketball court at her house when i called my mom she's very well connected so that'll be pertinent in a second <laughs> so i tell my mom the situation and she's like you have to call 911 or the police department there and i'm like i don't think if i call 911 like first of all it's not like serious emergency like they're gonna be mad second of all what are they gonna do it's not like they can just like open the gate and let me out like they don't just have the keys to everything in the world <laughs> and she's like if they get there then you can go out and check or they can check you'll feel safe to go outside and see can you push the gate open can you open the lock whatever and i'm like oh my god i really don't want to call 911 because like i feel like when you have to call 911 for like actually very terrifying things and then like the thought of doing it again just like bitch this is like things like this are someone with ptsd's nightmare okay i'm like Shh. I really don't freaking want to call them. So I call 911. The guy is a douche. I'm not going to lie. He was hella rude to me. And I explained to him the situation. He's like, whoa, I don't like, I don't know what you want me to do 
to you about it. Like, I don't... If I send a request for, you know, police to go there, they're gonna, like, decline the request. They're not gonna go there. They can't do anything. It's not an emergency. You're not in danger. And I'm like, bitch, yes, I am. He was being an asshole about it. He was like, what do you want me to do? Can you send someone here so that they can be here when I get out of my car or they can check the gate? Because I'm not about to get out of my car in the most dangerous area. I'm sorry, like, hello, I'm a young girl. <laughs> Are you stupid? He just like didn't understand. He was like, why don't you just get out of your car and check to see if the lock's locked? Because if there's literally men like stumbling by, looking over at me. I'm scared. Like, do I need to explain myself? Like, I feel unsafe. I said that so many times. I'm like, I feel very unsafe. I feel very unsafe, okay? And I'm not a dramatic ass person. These types of situations, I have learned that I have to be overly cautious. Not that it's your fault if shit happens to you because it's not, but when shit happens to you once, twice, three times, even just once sometimes, when shit happens to you over and over and over, you're like, okay, fuck it. If people aren't gonna stop being rapists, then I'm just gonna be a thousand percent more careful. <laughs> anyway, I felt unsafe, okay? Like, sue me for wanting this police to just come and stand here while I check the lock. If it's locked, then like, okay, I get it. They can't do anything, but like what they could do, give me some kind of like note, business card, I don't know, something to put on my windshield so that I could back up that steep ass ramp, park my car in the garage overnight, and then Uber home. If I didn't have like some kind of note, my car would, according to the signs, like be towed. I'm not gonna let my car be towed because the gym decided to lock their doors three and a half hours early. That whole conversation with 911, I wonder how long that was. It was four minutes, the first call, or the call that I made. And it ends with him saying, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm gonna put this request in, but I'm 99% sure that they're going to disregard it and they're not gonna show up. Great. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, 911 operator. Thank you. I would like to thank the system for being corrupt. Thank you. Because, you know, being in the most dangerous area of town, locked in a parking garage as a young girl, that's a very safe situation, you know? I call my mom back and I'm like, mom, they can't help me. I freaking told you. And so my mom gets pissed and I hear my dad in the back and he's like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Why would they not like, and so my aunt comes in clutch. My aunt just happens to be connected to like everyone. And she happened to know someone who worked at the police station. And it's not like the LAPD. It's one of those many little tiny areas, <laughs> precincts of LA. So it's not just like, oh, she knows someone that works at LAPD because like me too. But no, like this is a small city within a city, a small town within it. You know what I mean? I don't even know what to call it. I guess it's a city, but it's like within LA, very small. She just happened to know someone who worked for them. She calls him up. She's like, hey, Randy. No, I don't know if that's his name or not. And she explains the situation. She's like, my niece is locked in a parking garage at LA Fitness go help her basically <laughs> she's on the phone and i'm on the phone with my mom at this point so between 911 saying we can't help you and me calling my mom back i backed my car up the steep ramp which was very difficult because it's a steep ramp like this okay maybe not difficult for anyone else but me but i'm not good at like backing into things i'm not good at like parallel parking i suck at it okay i never had to learn how to do it like in driver's ed i don't know so i back up the steep ass the entrance and exit of the parking garage and it's like narrow cement walls. I've actually scratched my car on the side of it once before and I was going forward and I'm trying to just back all the way up it. It's freaking long. I make it and I just back straight into the parking spot. Okay, like I'm just gonna have to leave my car here, call an Uber. I'm still gonna have to walk down out to the street to get to my Uber. I'm gonna have to walk further actually because my car is parked up here now. What the fuck else am I gonna do? Meanwhile, my aunt works out with the guy that she knows. He's not even on duty right now. My mom lets me know that they're sending someone over to me to help me. She was like, you need to hang up with me because they're gonna call you and it's gonna be from like a unknown number or something by the way i cried all of my makeup off at this point i really was crying a lot because i was super scared when i was thinking like when i saw that the gate was locked and like after that sunk in and after i couldn't figure out what to do i was like what the fuck am i gonna do this is like a really bad situation my face is puffy as fuck so i get a call from unknown number and it's like a super nice lady and she's like ma'am we're sending people out there they should be there very soon and she's like super sweet super nice i drive my car back down to the bottom near the gate glad i just backed up into there for nothing i wait and i turn off my lights and like super quickly i see the police it's a lady and she gets out of her car it's like i'm literally in jail and we're talking through the phone but then like the window because there's this yellow gate in between us our dispatcher's calling seeing if they can get a hold of somebody 
and I'm like so yeah like they don't lock the garage till 11 30 according to all of these posted signs like all over the freaking garage but I got locked in like 15 minutes after eight so like what's good she looks at the lock and she's like oh yeah it's padlocked and it had like a code it wasn't a key or anything she's like let me see if I can call someone to get the number for security here because they probably locked it they can't get in touch with anyone yeah like I don't know you're probably gonna have to park and then uber and I can give you a note to put on your car or whatever and I'm like okay like that is a good alternative and plus like she's here now she can wait with me for my uber it's the best option so she's like can you do me a favor go take a picture of one of those signs up there that says when the garage closes and I'm like yeah for show sure. actually she was like can you drive up there and take a photo do me a favor can you drive up there take a picture of those signs for me and then come back and I was like oh I'll just run up there it's like probably faster anyway <laughs> she's like well I mean you could just literally back up and then I'm like, no, it's fine. I'll just run. I'm really bad at backing up. Okay. I sprint up this ramp, which I literally thought I was going to have a heart attack and throw up when I got to the top. And I'm not a dramatic ass person. That's how out of shape I am. And I go over to a photo. I take a picture of it. I couldn't even run down the ramp because I felt like I was going to puke and pass out. Not a dramatic ass person. And at that moment, I was like, maybe I should have been going to the gym. Shit. I run down, I show her the photo, and then like right then another officer pulls up and I tried to take videos of this, but like obviously I wasn't like holding my phone out. I was like, I was doing this. So you know, this isn't like super high quality footage we're talking here, but like it illustrates, I think I got the gate in the video. the police people and I think I even was filming at the end which I'll get to now so this other guy drives up and he's really nice too like these officers were super nice the lady was like this nice blonde lady The guy was super nice and he's like, well, this is what you get for working out, right? And I'm like, you know, honestly, I only came here because they've been charging me and I don't even have a membership here. He was like, what's wrong with this gym, man? Like, why did they lock their gates three hours early? And I'm like, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. They've been trying to call security. They tried to call a couple other ones because there's so many LA fitnesses. They literally couldn't get a hold of anyone. Seeing if they can get a hold of somebody. The two of them are like, what's the, like a common four digit? And like, what's the address of this place? They're just like putting in a few codes. The lady goes back to her car for a while and the guy's trying. I'm either going to get out of here, but probably not. Or I should probably download the Uber app on my phone, you know? Not sponsored. They're willing to come out and open the gate. The only other option that you're going to be able to do is just park the car and call an Uber to come get you. The lady comes back and she's holding a piece of paper in her hand and I'm like, oh my gosh, did she like get a hold of someone and they gave her the code because she had been kind of like doing what cops do where they like stand by their passenger door with the door open and they're like writing on the passenger seat, whatever. She had been there for probably like five minutes. So I'm like, oh my gosh, someone must have called her and given her the code. And the guy's like, did you get it? She was like, I might have, I might have. This is such a weird thing. I don't know, man. This is like some real universe shit that happened here, okay? Because yes, I was stuck in this shitty situation for I don't know what reason, but this just went to show me that like the universe has got my back okay she shows it to the guy and he's like can you just like what does that say and the paper i like glanced over at it and it was just kind of like a bunch of scribbles like loop-de-loops circles and stuff like that and she was like do my birthday do my birthday they must have been like pretty close because he knew her birthday so he puts in her birthday i don't know what her exact birthday was but i know that it was 62 because i remember thinking that's what year my mom was born let's say it was july 3rd well that's today was that subconscious let's say it was july 3rd 62 he did 7362 and the freaking padlock opened I was overcome with like the best feeling at that moment because when you don't have high expectations like I wasn't sitting there at all during this time thinking like someone's gonna come and let me out I was like I'm gonna have to park my car here and uber and maybe if I get lucky I'll get like a note to put on my car I can leave a business card on your windshield and so when that happened I was like oh my gosh exceeding my expectations like what is this and he goes you did it again and she like shakes her head kind of and I'm like what is going on here is that a guess? Yep. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? You literally saved my life. You were my literal hero. Like, let me lick your asshole. What? How did you do that? Like, did you get a hold of security? Like, did someone give you the code? The guy police officer answers for her. And she kind of is like laughing and shaking her head. And he's like, she's like a freaky lady. I don't remember exactly what he said, but basically he told me that like, she's also a psychic. I mean, like a retired psychic, I guess. I don't know what they, I, I don't know if they were actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, are they lying to me? She was like, I'm very intuitive, and I'm like thinking like, but it was her birthday, like, okay, I get it, like, try my birthday, but like, why would the person who made that lock code have her birthday be the lock? Like, that must have just been a coincidence, or maybe, I don't know, 
I'm actually so confused by that. I even like told my mom about it and she was like, wait, what? Why her birthday? Why the police officer's birthday? I don't know. I don't know if it was like the code just happened to be 7362 and she was like, oh my gosh, that's my birthday. Like try my birthday. Or if she just like had a feeling. I honestly, I have no freaking idea. When I drove away, I was just like, damn, like that lady was psychic and she just cracked the code. But then now I'm thinking like, wait, were they just joking? And like, how did she actually get the code then? Doesn't matter now, I guess, you know, I got out of it. <laughs> As I drive away, I'm like, you saved my life. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys saved my life. By the time I like drove through the gate, I had to back my car up so they can push the gate forward. By the time I was driving out, it was like 9.45. So I definitely got lucky that my parents happened to be in Utah. They happened to be with that aunt because 911, it just wouldn't have happened. So anyway, I'm still like pissed off because it literally said they closed the garage at 11.30. Like I'm literally gonna sue you for locking me in there. Like, do I have legal grounds to sue here? Lawyers, hit me up. Anyway, if you wanna know, some more times that I called 911 because it's happened more than any human should. Let me know. Subscribe.